Hard to find a lot of criticisms when you make 15 straight shots. I'm not sure I'd ever been a part of it. Well, I don't think I have ever been a part of 15 straight made shots. I know uh, in the 2003 NCAA tournament in, in the R old RCA Dome, my Marquette team made 10 straight in overtime against uh, Missouri in the final 32, and I never thought I'd see that again. And uh, different environment, different uh, time of year, but 15 straight's pretty impressive. But I think it came because of really good movement of the ball. And, and we, our spacing was much better tonight than it was on this past uh, Friday night. Our defensive energy was really good. Even when, it went, even when we made mistakes, uh, we played with energy. We probably gambled a little bit too much, a little bit, a little bit too reckless. Um, there's a give and take to that. We had 14 steals, which is, which is big for us. We had 57 deflections, which is big for us. Uh, but at the same time, we gave up too many points in the paint. And uh, that combined with us giving them the ball back and then we didn't capitalize on the turnovers we took from them uh, as much as we need to. So, answering my own questions, we're finding the criticisms right now. But um, we can get a lot better. I have no doubt about that. We can get a lot better on, on, on both ends. And uh, we can get even more consistent depth as we, as we go along. And uh, the good news is, is, is that we continued to play hard and we played uh, in a much more efficient clip in the second half. And, um, and that's what you want to do. You want to improve while you're winning. So fortunately, that's what happened for us, and that's what we've got to continue to strive for. First question? I guess to talk about those points in the paint, but then at the same time, those steals, it felt like they were getting in there easy sometimes, but then some of those turnovers you were creating when they got the ball, and they mm -hmm. were feeding the transition better. I mean, is that, how much is that a teaching point? How much is that just kind of the way the ball well, you got to have. We want to have great. We want to have great activity. We got to have better rim presence, and we know that. And we're trying to adjust to the rules. I thought tonight uh, a little different feel to it, even than on uh, this past Friday night. And that's all part of um, everybody getting used to it. It was a very physical game tonight, and we want to make sure that we're not. You know, we had we had some fouls in the front line. I thought uh, Thomas worked very hard down low. Thought Max did an excellent job. Um, we've got to do a better job defending high load and not let it in as easy as it was. And uh, at the same time, come with our, with our, uh, with our digs. And, and we really haven't put a double scheme in yet, but uh, to, to build it with, with, with coming down and being active on the ball. That's what you want. You want to make it really hard for them to get a clean look. You know, once they're inside, you want to make it hard for them to have a clean pass. And there were times we didn't do that. And they did an excellent job of playing to their strength, which was not only the high-low game, but movement. They're very, very quick. We knew that Friday night's game, so we showed – so little of, I'm not sure the team did see any of the Vanderbilt game, to be honest with you. We watched it, but uh, they might have seen some of it. We knew that wasn't the team we were going to get tonight. Dave's too good a coach, and those kids are, those kids are high-level guys. I mean, they, they, uh, the, the films we had watched of them before uh, was not indicative of, of the way they played on Friday, so we didn't fully expect to get that at all, and we didn't. They'll be a good team, but uh, for us, uh, it's just continued uh, building, building that level of half-court defense to where we make it harder for it to go in. Alex, how much were the, uh, the 15 straight shots? How much was the ball really being producing? Well, I was, I was, I was oblivious. I knew it was going in. JD said something late there, uh, and Jade about the uh, about the shooting. I didn't really realize it. So that part would be fun to watch. But it was a lot of that. It was, it was getting, it was the break. It was getting some really good looks on the break. They were playing very loose. Uh, but but effective, effective and efficient. Loose and reckless is bad. We got that a little bit in the first half, you know, with some of the turnovers. But loose and efficient and really utilizing the whole court is where we're at our best. And that's, that's, uh, that was a product of that. Mike, did you get a good look at uh, Nick's finger? Crowd seemed to... Uh... Yeah, that was... Um, but um, my biggest thing was with that, I mean, I wasn't going to try to fix it, just make sure he wasn't dizzy and that he... Um, you know, it was going to be, you know, be there to kind of help him if he started to get dizzy and, and not to panic because he looked at it. So, um, but, I mean, he, they, they fixed it right away. So, obviously, it was a lot worse. It looked a lot worse than it actually was. It didn't affect his shooting. Had he made a three before he'd done that? Yeah, one for two. Yeah, then he makes four. So, that's good news. I, I, I was definitely uh, excited when they said he's fine. So, we don't want to lose him. We don't want to lose anybody, but we don't want to lose that guy. Mm -hmm. Played the fourth most minutes on the team, but and also was at the right place at the right time on other sure. collections that may have went the other way. So, 
Uh, your thoughts on his I thought he made good progress. I probably played him a few too many minutes to where we wanted, and I definitely played James a few too many, but not not because they're not deserving, but just in the whole managing of minutes. But uh, Thomas did a nice job, and he came back in after fouls and did a nice job. He played with really good energy, and uh, he made a lot of strides from game one to game two because I thought he was capable of so much more on Friday night, and and certainly his energy is noticeable and people get excited about that. But I'm not, I know about the energy. I want to see the efficiency. And I thought he played much more efficiently tonight. Not taking anything away from your first two opponents, but having a team like Creighton in here Thursday before you go to Maui, just how important is that going to be? Well, it's going to be very important because they're really good. And um, I have paid, I, the, the coaches told me where, where they've been picked in a couple of their polls, and I didn't see that. I mean, but I, I don't know that league as well anymore. But I know they're good, and I know they can usually score inside and outside, and they, they put all skilled players on the floor. Uh, they run numerous actions and sets, and I think Maurice Watson is really good, really good. And he brings another dimension to their team. So um, they play tomorrow night, I believe, right? Yes. So we'll have a chance to, to study more of the films. The coaches are way ahead on that. I did a lot of work, or my personal work in the – in the summer, but now it'll be a matter of going back and digging back into that and figuring out the best way to play them. But they will come in here uh, with a great mindset like they always do. They'll come in here physical, and they'll come in here really believing that they can make shots. Pete? Yeah, Tom, when you mentioned about improving the rim presence, what, what will it take to do that? And in particular with, with Thomas, how good a rim protector can he be once he's going Well, I just think, I just, I mean, we got to continue to to understand what it is. We've got three new guys inside, plus Max, who's new to us. And Max is in a different role and, um, than what he's accustomed to. So that will take some time. And, and, um, and Colin's getting back to speed. But again, you want to you put, put really good pressure on the ball. You want to close up the, uh, the driving lanes. Uh, we've got to continue to figure out how we're going to play the post. And then you want to have really, you, you want to make sure that you're really rotating on the penetration. So there's a lot of things, things that we, we just got to continue to build on what we're doing and just get better at it. And, um, but, but we want to put pressure on the rim too. And, and there were a couple of times when we weren't, and the guys were noticing that, right? I mean, it's, it's, uh, I mean, Yogi did some tremendous things in the post tonight when we, when we caught him off the block. And um, that's the kind of action we've got to have. So it's just a matter of, of making it harder to get it in there and then trying to do your best to understand how to help and how to cover it with verticality without fouling. And then the other night, one foul, uh, I believe it was Thomas had a foul because they said he put his chest into the offensive man. And then he had his hands were clean. I mean, it's, that could be a game-to-game -game type of thing that we're going to see. Because the other night, I'm not sure that would have been called. You know, putting in the chest, and I got to watch the film. And I'm not being critical of the officiating. I'm saying that's, it's new for everybody right now. So uh, one way to, to, to take away some of it will be to play more zone. But right now, that's not what we want to do. Right now, we want to get our, we want to get our understanding of, of how to move our feet and keep our hands outside of our body and get our verticality right and get our help right. Well, that's part of it, but I think what's really been what's really been good is the way they're they're talking in practice. And uh, Troy stopped practice the other day, or asked to stop it. Um, and then one time, I think he just stopped it, which was pretty good because he'd never done that really before, maybe four times in a two-hour practice to make points. And then you start to realize, like Troy's one of your veterans. So um, the more they talk, especially defensively, the more they help reinforce what works, what we're trying to teach them, but what they know works, the better it is. And then, and then you want a, a lot of quick talking in the game. You don't want a lot of long conversations in a game, right? You want a lot of, of uh, exclamation points and bullet points. You don't want long paragraphs when guys are talking in the game. Then you're not playing. And I think as that continues to get better um, in practice, it'll continue to manifest itself in the game. So, but when it comes to your question about the pace and tempo, that's where Jay, James comes in, too. That's where Rob comes in. That's where Troy comes in with as much as the ball is in his hands, decision-making constantly. And uh, that makes the game easier for Yogi, who's already pretty good at those things. Zach, kind of, <clears throat> sorry, kind of a backwards question, but you talked about with turnovers, and, and forgive me if I was misunderstanding, but 
that is sort of the, the line between reckless and efficient. Sure. Is this a team with the experience it's gotten, obviously, we, when we talk about 16 made threes, 15 shots in a row, the potential it has to just kind of be explosive where sure. you, you, you let guys maybe take chances a little mm-hmm. bit more sometimes? Yeah, I just think it's the reads. I think it's, it's, to me, it's like we've had a couple of these now. Straight ahead passes on the break. You don't throw a straight ahead pass. You've got to create an angle. So it, it's really about that to me. It's make the same pass. Just create, create one dribble over to create an angle because you make it easy for the defender to get a hand on it when, when, when it's straight down the line. So, so that's just one example. It's, it's more angle driven and, and maybe sometimes one dribble sooner driven, you know, drawing a crowd and then kicking it rather than driving into a crowd and trying to make a play. But we have we we spend a lot of time building our our mindset of attacking, and so um, we just want to be critical of when it was an obvious poor decision. But I don't want to put them in a situation where they're not trying to make plays because that would harness uh, a lot of a lot of playmakers. And we we have a playmaking offense, right? Make plays for others, and the more we do that, it's amazing how much it goes back to each other. You know, we had five guys in double figures tonight, so. That's a huge part of that. Okay. Coach, thank you very much. All right, thank you.